This, my friends, has to be the latest review of the Intel Core i9-12900K you can find, at least for this very moment, which of course will change soon. As you're used to from me, I'm not even a single month late with my tests, but several. However, there's also a bright side for you watching, because Intel's new Alder Lake platform was in fact plagued with a few issues at launch, issues almost any new platform comes with. And in the meantime, the majority supposedly have been fixed, meaning that in today's review, you'll get to see fully matured test results. Still, I'd like to clearly point out that not everything went according to plan for me. There certainly were a few issues I had to deal with. One of which even led to the system not even fully booting up, posting, basically ending up in a shutdown reboot cycle. What the reason for that was and how you can fix such an issue, I'll explain in today's video. But let's get back to the 12900K now. The CPU finally brings 16 cores and 24 threads to the table, is finally manufactured using the 10 nanometer process. On top of that, also comes with DDR5 and PCIe 5.0 support. Of course, according to Intel's well-known tradition, a new socket going by the name of LJ1700 is introduced as well. The platform's codename is Alder Lake, and as a matter of fact, Intel finally is showing some real strength again with it. That strength, surprisingly, also can be felt when it comes to pricing. The MSRP, the manufacturer's suggested retail price, is at 589 US dollars. Current retail pricing in January 2022 is at 600 to 620 dollars, though. Compared to the heavily criticized predecessor i9-11900K, which comes in at an MSRP of 549 dollars, definitely a small price hike. The price does appear very nice though when comparing against AMD's current flagship Ryzen 9 5950X coming in at an MSRP of $799 and retailing for about $680 to $710 right now. So in terms of pricing, today's i9-12900K is much closer to the Ryzen 9 5900X 12-core CPU. So what kind of performance is there to be expected? Will we have to thank Intel for generally lowering CPU prices again? Will Intel offer us enthusiasts the better price to performance ratio at the end of the day? At this point, I'd like to voluntarily and without any payment, thank my favorite PC hardware shop, Equipper, and especially that Spartan warrior named Yargios over there. He's been to lots of battles for me in the past, and he's always giving his best to get a hold of those low stock components for my tests. Thank you so much. Hashtag not sponsored. One reason for being so incredibly late with my review, plain simply is DDR5 memory. It has been extremely scarce for a very long time. Now it can be had in bigger quantities, but the pricing is still atrocious. Nonetheless, I didn't want to back down and wanted to test Intel Alder Lake with DDR5, even though DDR4 would have been a much easier and especially cheaper option. Hats off to Intel at this point for the special packaging. The unboxing experience of such a premium product certainly was a lot more fun that way. It's also great decoration. But it's time to get down on the tech, what makes Alder Lake special. Huge milestones, if you ask me, can be witnessed in the core layout. Instead of cramming all those cores with full speeds into such a CPU, which at some point need to downclock, the cores have been split into performance and efficiency cores, for short, P and E cores. The main difference between these two core types lies within the clock speeds and the fact that P cores, thanks to hyper-threading, offer two threads per core. Such a complex architecture, of course, also requires a modern scheduler within operating systems. Windows 11 supposedly should do a great job with the new layout, which is why all tests today were carried out with the latest Windows out there. Quite special is the fact that we are given the choice to pick between two different RAM types, just like we are used to from instances of past decades when in the transitional phase. In this very case, Intel's 12th gen CPUs can either be operated with DDR4 or DDR5 RAM. You therefore should pay very close attention to what motherboard you pick and which RAM slots it comes with. 
In my case, I went with the Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X DDR5 along with 32GB of G-Skill Trident Z DDR5 6000MHz memory. The i9-12900K is being cooled by the nice and powerful Be Quiet Pure Loop 360mm AIO liquid cooler since I happen to have the required LJ1700 mounting kit for testing. Of course I'll once again pick my RTX 3090 graphics card to prevent the GPU bottlenecks for the most part without having to lower any graphics settings. But right after completing this system's assembly, there was nothing at first. While the PC did power on, the status LEDs on the motherboard were jumping from CPU to RAM and vice versa. The system then after a while shut down itself only to turn back on and repeating the same behavior. The system was stuck in a power cycle with the screen remaining black the entire time. So my first assumption was that maybe either the CPU or RAM needed reseeding since stuff like that can happen. The much more plausible explanation however was that there's some kind of incompatibility between the memory kit and motherboard. Something like that isn't exactly uncommon with brand new platforms, especially when a new RAM type is introduced as we know by now. In the vast majority of such cases a BIOS update usually does the trick. It's just that the screen remains black and there is no way I can even get into the BIOS to initiate an update. Another solution to this would be to try out a different memory kit, preferably with a lower clock speed. In my case, needless to say, that wasn't an option since I only had that one DDR5 kit at the time. Luckily, many Gigabyte motherboards come equipped with a feature going by the name of QFlash Plus, allowing us to flash a new BIOS version without having to rely on any components installed. So one simply downloads the correct BIOS file, renames the actual BIOS file to gigabyte.bin, puts all those BIOS files onto a USB flash drive, formatted with the FAT32 file system, and then one simply plugs in the USB flash drive into that special designated BIOS USB port, pushes the QFlash plus button on the motherboard and waits until the board does the rest on its own. The whole procedure can take somewhere in between 5 to 20 minutes. So don't interrupt anything, it's best to wait a little longer than cause any sort of corruption. In my case, this turned out to be the solution to my problem. Still, after a few tests, I had to come to the conclusion that the set XMP profile with 6000 MHz wasn't stable. Officially, Intel, after all, only supports up to 4800 MHz. So the combination of my motherboard and the current BIOS version doesn't allow for more right now. Luckily, 5800 MHz turned out to run stable, which is the frequency I ran all the tests with. Once I decided to read out clock speeds with hardware info, I was quite surprised by the fairly unusually stable values. I doubt these are fully correct. Anyway, the clock speed of the P cores are at 4.9 GHz at full load, while the E cores are at 3.7 GHz. The max achieved turbo slash boost clock with my configuration is 5.2 GHz. Practically identical clock speeds can be read out while gaming. Now I fear I've lost most of you a long time already, so to cut to the chase, here are my test results now. But before that, I'd like to quickly point out that all other platforms weren't tested with 32GB DDR5 5800MHz but 16GB DDR4 3200MHz RAM instead. I did make sure though that the capacity did not influence any of the tests.
Now, as weird as it may sound, right now I'd go this far and even state that Intel is currently offering us the slightly better price to performance ratio with their i9-12900K compared to the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X, because we don't get to see a clear end result there. Both the 12900K and 5950X offer a spectacular fight, in which in terms of gaming, Intel undoubtedly shows its newly gained strengths thanks to the huge single core performance gains. There is even proof that the 12900K can sometimes take home victories in aspects such as productivity and rendering, but that often depends on specific applications. If we are talking about gaming performance, Intel is often leading and is at the top of the list, and the new i9-12900K takes it to a whole new level, in close to every single game title I tested, some of which aren't even really CPU heavy, the Alder Lake flagship model clearly takes the lead, and that doesn't only apply to the average frame rate, but 1% lows as well. Of course the performance difference isn't as noticeable once we start increasing the screen resolution, because that's where the graphics card mostly becomes the weakest link in the chain. Nonetheless, the raw performance gains are very much visible in those 1080p tests conducted. Not quite as nice are the temperatures though, despite cooling the 12900K with a powerful 360mm AIO liquid cooler, at full load I still got to 83 degrees Celsius and that's quite hot. It by far isn't a catastrophic result however, it just goes to show that there's close to no overclocking headroom left for us. But then again, overclocking isn't the same as it used to be anyway nowadays. There are hardly any gains waiting to be had, and that applies to both Intel and AMD. What also doesn't leave the best impression when dealing with the 12900K has to be Intel's nemesis of the past few generations of their CPUs, the fairly high power consumption. Despite the greatly improved 10 nanometer process, Intel still isn't able to match AMD in terms of power efficiency. Nonetheless, it clearly must be said that their efficiency has come a long way when considering the sheer amount of performance behind that CPU. Still, the bitter aftertaste of knowing the comparable model 5950X by the competition consuming 100 watts less power measured at full load remains. Having said that, one should not ignore the difference in pricing. Intel for now, believe it or not, is the cheaper option at least when talking about mainstream flagship models. At the end of the day, with their i9-12900K, one can definitely say Intel has now become competitive again, a serious threat to AMD. Such a battle between these CPU giants is great for us consumers and worth to be excited about. With that being said, I can now recommend picking up the i9-12900K. Thank you to all of you that have been watching till the end. Take care and until next time.